Hello everyone. Back again. Let's continue this quality management system. Last video, we did till policy. Now let's see how do you proceed with this implementation of quality management system. Identify all the processes, whatever is required to implement quality management system in your organization. And whatever all the necessary inputs also need to be identified to make this quality management system implementation effective to achieve the desired quality of the product applying this processes methodology into the process now organization shall also determine the processes needed for the quality management system and their application throughout the organization processes can be any process whatever any organization fundamentally requires for ensuring its smooth operation production, maintenance, marketing, human resources, finance could be included and you have to include all the process whatever is there in the organization with the flow chart whatever it is and it is better that it is documented so that flow of authority from one level to another level becomes you know identified otherwise there is a com confusion and there is also creation of silos between the operation unless we have this interaction between processes or few of the failure with the organization also attribute to lack of interaction between the processes in any organization there has to be continued continuous interaction between these processes there should be communication between these processes to make this quality management system effective so that also need to be defined and ensured it so it can also be documented somewhere else in your apex manual you need to identify the input required for the process and uh, the output now every process may have a different input you know and output requirement like for example purchase will have uh, some other requirements for inputs depending on the material requirement purchase department output will be the input for the production department something like that so every department will identify its inputs outputs and they need to ensure their internal quality to ensure organization quality as a whole the cumulative total of this processes should be the organization uh, quality but individual excellence can be exponentially higher when it becomes cumulative total of all the individuals in the organization and the processes put together so this is this should be the approach to achieve the highest level of process quality so i, I said identification of interaction and sequential interaction is also very essential how it how the authority flows from one level to another also need to be very clearly defined delegation authority has to be defined all these responsibilities and roles need to be defined for all the persons involved in the quality management system and it should be ensured that almost all from top to bottom need to be involved in this it cannot be either from top or from bottom it has to be run ingrained into the employees mindset that this is what how we are going to work otherwise some one person or two person one department one process cannot ensure the highest level of quality of quality management system to ensure this again resources human resources and material resources also need to be ensured by the leadership of the management after evaluating its requirement at every level organization shall maintain documentation as required they say in normal uh, scenario that uh, wherever the competence of people is very high you may not need higher level of documentation wherever the competence is high you may need 30 percent of documentation wherever competency is low you may need higher percentage of documentation this is what people say but it is better document everything is documented here therefore everything need preferably need to be documented which can serve as a knowledge database as required by the uh, standard itself in for future references 
retain the document information to have confidence that the processes are being carried out as planned. Then coming to planning, actions to address risk and opportunity is the first requirement in planning. Planning is very essential in any project to be successful. They say in you know, normal terms that you will need 70% uh, planning and 30% implementation. So more the planning, more effective will be the implementation. Therefore, planning has to be focused more effectively. Whatever failures we see in, uh, in, in, in our project implementation, be it road or the railways, it's all a lack of planning or bad planning. Better the planning, then better is the success rate of implementation. Now then in planning, we need to identify the objective derived from the policy. Objective is nothing but to keeping a target for what for the employees to be achieved. Now, why you need this target? Because uh, target without target, we probably slacken down in our normal uh, performance. So if we have to achieve 10 kilometers run for uh, by any person, he will not be able to the, achieve the target or objective. So what he, he, need, he will do or he need to do is plan is every day he will try for one kilometer and practice for say 10 days. So he, so that he can try for this uh, 10 kilometer objective. Similarly, in achieving our targets in the production also, this target could be high, but that has to be slowly, slowly achieved. For this reason, it, is, it needs to be defined, helping people to plan. So one more requirement here is whenever there is a change, uh, people need to be careful in adopting to change because change brings along with the risk. So change management of the risk is very essential. For every change, there is a change uh, management procedures need to be documented. There are a lot of issues wherever people have not catered for the change introduced in the process have led to failures of processes or failures of so many things. Uh, risk, what uh, we have to prepare a risk register as shown, like we have already discussed in our earlier uh, video. Risk register will have uh, like this, uh, columns like this, processes, activities, ranks, compliance requirements, likelihood, severity and exhibition, uh, existing controls, risk rating, additional controls and risk revised uh, ratings. Then you identify the rating for severity rating and likelihood and the compliance requirement is always one or uh, zero or yes or no there cannot be different levels uh, then you prepare a matrix accordingly you decide whether it has it is within the significant or not significant you have to identify some significant level rating sort of thing then you have to accept or reject according to this matrix for more information you can refer the earlier uh, video on risk management. Then coming to support, the organization must determine and provide all the resources needed to establish the management. They have to provide all the resources needed. It could be material or human resources to improve the quality management system. And competence level of the people is very essential and competence need to be evaluated every, every now and then for every employee and mostly key personnel managing this or responsible for quality management system. This competence need to be evaluated for with respect to the education, training and uh, experience. The awareness also needs to be ensured that organization must ensure all people doing work under the control aware of the quality policy and objectives and how they are contributing to the effectiveness of GMS. It is necessary that people are aware of the quality policy and objective, which it's very clear since it is a target, they should know and they will know. So this is how you they need to stand to support the whole QMS and with the support of the management. Communication, this policy need to be communicated to the employees and uh, as I said, the policy need to be made available for the stakeholders. Organization must determine the quality management system related matters on which it is wished to communicate. It has to in advance decide what needs to be communicated, what not needs to be, what need not be communicated. The organization must document information required for ISO 9001-2015 and for the effective operation of its quality management system. It should also decide what is needed to be documented or not need to be documented. 
this uh, standard does not prescribe specifically but however it is advised that it is it helps you maintaining a you know, knowledge database uh, to maintain all this document there are been few required documents which you the standard prescribes which i will be showing in uh, after completing all these videos on these systems what are the documents required list of documents required so it, there is also a record a document is nothing but uh, medium of information where you store it it could be in electronic form or it could be on hard copy similarly the record earlier version had this record separately written and now this record is a part of document so record is nothing but in medium of evidence it is evidence which cannot be changed document can be changed revised but record cannot be changed like for example log books or some certificate sign these are all evidence which can be produced as evidence which cannot be changed these are they are all records in operation planning and control operations need to be controlled processes need to be controlled with the feedback loop the organization must in plan implement and control processes to meet the requirements for delivering products and services it should in advance have this planning defined requirements of products and services organization must be able to determine and review requirements of products and services and document customer communication and feedback customer uh, communication feedback is a very essential input for uh, this control uh, requirements what is uh, gone wrong with the product or the processes customer is the best person to judge and that need to be welcomed and evaluated and once again correction need to be carried out after receiving the com customer complaint and suggestions the design and development of products and services to be established implemented and maintained that is also uh, to be done in advance control of externally provided provided processes products and services this is related to the outsourcing of the product or process requirement now it's become very common that uh, most of the part of the or part of the process requirements or product requirements are offloaded to some third parties contractors to offload the risk of pollution or human resources or anything or if there are a shortage of power excess demand excess production requirement these things are offloaded to smaller contractors for that also it is needed to be controlled for with respect to quality management system here the organization must carry out predetermined arrangements to appropriate stages at appropriate stages of the production service delivery in order to verify that products and services meet all requirements so the quality checks or quality whatever requirements need to be evaluated at different stages of the production to ensure for effective quality management system control of non conforming outputs so organization must also identify any outputs that do not conform to its intended requirements and establish and implement control to ensure that there are neither delivered to the customer nor used intentionally then comes performance evaluation this is very very important after operation after the operation it is required that management need management takes control of the situation and evaluates performance of the quality management processes the organization will determine determine what it need to monitor and measure and if you cannot measure it cannot be managed either managerial saying so for managing it you need to measure and how do you measure the organization has to define that measurement units in whatever form convenient and comfortable to the organization the best way is could be internal audit of man measuring this quality management system performance they can carry out at a duration wherever they are comfortable with it could be yearly it could be half yearly or quarterly then after this internal audit management review needs to be conducted by top management to evaluate the whole uh, whole process management and the audits and if there is any non conformity then need to be taken any correction is required and resources to be provided by the management this is how management review need to be conducted it may not be 
you know physical meeting it could be also virtual meeting but however management control need to be emphasized here after every audit or after a duration of period which is pre decided this keeps the whole process in check because they are the one who control the processes they are the one who can change the processes wherever required so they need to exercise control and caution on the whole quality management process by conducting management review improvement preferably continuous improvement it is necessary that it has to be ensured that improvement is carried out now how do we do this it has to be incorporated in your objective after every annual or uh, biannual period after every evaluation of management performance performance by management this objective evaluation has to be carried out by management and if the objective is achieved a slight incremental objective has to be assigned to that to be 5% 10% 20% which should be smart this targets has to be assigned to the objective and this objective need to be evaluated to ensure improvement and given a con- uh, incremental improvement every now and then to ensure improvement in your performance this is the end of quality management system process video thank you my viewers if you like this please like share subscribe and help me to bring out many videos on this this may not be the end i'll add on to this in the subsequent weeks or coming days thank you again